All right, guys, here is the job for the day. We have three fir trees to take down, um, some targets around them, and I'm gonna go over them real quick for you before we climb them and just explain to you my thought process as I go. Okay, so I'll show you the trees that need to be taken down. Here's the first tree we're gonna take down. It is a split top fir. And if you look at it, there's a big split going about halfway down the trunk there. And that's always a sign of rot inside the tree. So you have to be very careful um, cutting these down because what will happen is you'll put a face cut in from the ground, back cut, and then the tree will split in half on you. And the stems will go in dir direction and they're lean there, so you have to be super careful. This one, because it's leaned out so hard onto the fence and this fruit tree over here, we are not going to cut it from the ground. You can see there's a lean out towards the fence and the fruit tree. I have no way of wedging this um, out into the road or into the field here. So the safest way to deal with this tree to avoid any damage to property is we're just gonna climb it and we're gonna chunk it to the ground, okay? Whenever you have a tree that's got a significant lean on it towards a target or something like that, unless you have someone with you to put a line in it and pull it over, you're better off minimizing your risk by just climbing the tree and cutting it. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do with this one. Second tree we're gonna deal with is a fir over here. It's leaned onto the house. Show you a side view here. Okay, here it is. That's that left stem right here. We're gonna cut that down, okay? You'll easily reach the house, um, probably halfway into the house, and it's all caught up in this other fir behind it. This is another tree you are not going to wedge over um, out of there. And the reason for that is those other limbs from the fir behind it are holding that tree in. So if you try and wedge it, what's gonna happen is you could have the hinge fail and it just go right onto the house. So again, climb it maybe takes 15, 20 minutes to climb this thing and chunk it down with this one saw. Okay, so why, why take the risk of trying to fall it from the ground and wedge it over? It's not worth it. So we're gonna knock that one down. We got one more. Here's the third fir tree we're gonna take down. This one, I'm still going over whether I wanna wedge it or chunk it down in pieces. We'll see how it goes. But if you look at it, it's gotta lean out towards this fruit tree right here. This is where the tree wants to go, right onto that fruit tree, okay? But what we're gonna try and do is put it over here onto the road, right where that other tree is. We're gonna cut that one down first, and we're gonna put this tree over here. Okay, and I'm gonna show you a cut that you can make on a tree like this that's leaned out over a target and try and spin it out 30, 40 degrees from where that lean is. It's called a sizz wheel. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that for you and show you here in just a minute when we get going. Okay, so you can see the lean on the tree. It's probably five, six feet out in front of the tree, the top is. That's how hard it's leaning out there. Um, if it was leaning, much harder than that, I would probably just forego trying to sizz wheel and wedge it over. I would either pull it over with a vehicle or chunk it down. Okay, let's get started. The saw we're gonna use today is gonna be the T540i XP. I use this 90 something percent of the time when I'm taking trees down as far as a limbing. Once I get to a big enough section of wood, I'll switch over to a larger saw like a 261 or 562 XP, something like that, but this thing will get all the limbing done for you and actually chunk down some of the tree. If you guys are still using gas saws to do your limbing and your initial chunking down, you really got to get one of these 540 XPs. They are phenomenal. The new batteries last an extremely long time. This whole job I used one battery to take care of and I probably still had a couple bars or more left on the battery at the end of the job. I don't get paid by Husqvarna to tell you guys about this saw. It's just something I wanted to share with you because I've been so impressed with it. 
Once you get high enough, guys, put in a second lanyard. Just as a precaution, in case your main one fails for some reason. Now you got two attachment points to the tree. We got a good drop zone down there. You can see that it's clear. So I can drop any limb down there. I don't have to worry about hitting anything. Otherwise I'd be hand grabbing all these limbs as I go up and I'd be swinging them out into a drop zone like this. I'd be looking, dropping it to another one. Right, but there's nothing underneath me. So I'm just gonna go right up here and cut them right off. Okay, so when you go to top a tree that's hung up, it seems like it's hung up. As the tree's moving, look up. See if it's, if there's anything that's holding it in. I can tell this one's free. So I'm good to top it right here. Okay, so I'm gonna get myself closer to the stem when I top. I'm gonna look down and figure out where my drop zone is gonna be. I have a trailer over here to my left, the house, but we're not gonna hit the house. It's short enough now that I can get it in here. So I'm gonna shoot right here for the pad. What I do is my angle cut first. To me, it's just easier to, to match your cut. Um, there's different angles you can be at on this cut, depending on how you wanna control the top or a piece that you're breaking off. For now, we're just gonna go with around a, you know, a 45 degree angle, maybe 30 degree angle. We take our face out, come in for the back cut. Okay, let's get the face out. I'm looking where my bar is. It's gonna be 90 degrees perpendicular to your bar when you put your face in where the tree's gonna go, okay? So I'm looking down and I'm looking at my bar. I can tell it's gonna go right for that pad. Come in for your flat cut. Her face is out. It looks pretty clean. We're gonna there we go. Okay, here's where you could use your hand saw if you want. I just use the saw most of the time. What I do is I start it and then I stop. And then I get up here and position my hand so I can control the top. This is not unsafe. Um, no matter what people tell you, what you have to do is this tip, as long as that is not in the way of hitting something, you're never gonna get kicked back where this bar comes out of the, the tree on you. Okay, so let's start this out. See, it's already starting to go. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna start chunking it down. We're gonna aim right where that top went. Okay, flat cut first. Now come in with your back cut, either above or below. I usually go below. Um, I actually ended up having a piece one time grab my saw when I was above the front cut and almost lost some teeth. It was a pretty bad deal. So be really careful of that because it'll grab your saw and pull your saw down with the piece. So I go below. So the piece is moving around. I can see it. I can just break it off. There we go. You're trying to get, your goal is to get these pieces of land as flat as possible. So before you snap them off, before you snap them off, kind of visualize how long the piece is, and how it's gonna to rotate to the ground. So if you can get them to land flat, they cause a lot less damage to the ground and to the log if you're trying to save it for something. It's moving. Take your saw out. You can drop it if you need to. All right, I can crack this off now. Try and make it land flat. So I'm going up that larger fur in this uh, part of the video.
to limit out. The reason I'm doing that is a lot of these limbs are hanging out far enough that even though we're going to spin the tree out with the sizz wheel to clear the trees, some of those branches will actually still hit the tree and then possibly uh, damage it. So always consider those uh, types of things happening before you start putting face and back cuts in because once you do that, you're not going to be climbing up there to limb something like this out. I don't really need to. I don't have anything I need to swing out over. So I don't mind just putting one cut in and peeling it down. That's it, we'll get down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up each stem here and we're gonna fall the entire stem over right through here and one right in the field there. Okay guys, this might be hard for you to see. Um, I don't know how the lens is affecting it, but there's a lean of this tree straight out in front of where I'm pointing. Okay, so right along these fruit trees, we want it over here more towards the basketball hoop or into this other fur here. So I'm gonna put a face cut in. This angle just to the left of the basketball hoop and I'm gonna leave a lot of holding wood on this side and I'm gonna watch the tree as it starts to go so I can nibble away at that wood, okay? Face has gotta go in towards the basketball hoop, right? So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put my blade in at the angle first and then I'm gonna just get behind it and I'm gonna look and see where it is 90 degrees to that bar to make sure it's aiming over here. This one, because we want the stem to lay flat, instead of nose diving into the ground, I'm gonna use the hump bolt. my hinge wood across the stump. All these fibers that are getting pulled, that's what's holding the tree on, okay? This side was a little thick, and what I was doing is while the tree was starting to move, I could see the top moving as I was looking up, I was trimming away at this side, okay, to get it to where it would shift over to the right. There'd be more holding wood here because of how I was seeing it move, okay? And that actually, as the tree came down, it shifted over to the right, right where I needed to by the basketball hoop and that was just from trimming in over here on this hinge. You have to be careful of doing that if there's side leans and stuff towards structures because you could cut this side off and the tree could rotate over your shoulder. Okay, let's get this, this other stem down here. We're gonna try and put this one right into the road. I can tell 
all the lean is right on this fence. So we're gonna try and bring it over here to the right. that was forming here was because of the stress of this hinge trying to move into the void. It actually didn't need the scissor wheel on this one, but sometimes you do. What will happen is where this crack is, this whole piece of hinge wood will move into the void out into here, and that's what's holding that tree the entire time from breaking off and going into the fence is this big chunk of wood right here moving into that void, okay? And then what it'll do is swing it right around over to here. We swung it, swung it probably 40 degrees from where it wanted to go. guys for this next part so I'm grabbing here and 
ahead and ax. If you guys are doing tree work, I highly suggest you get one of these Husqvarna's, these new ones. They have nice big hammer poles in the back for driving wedges. It doesn't tear your wedges up as bad as those axes with these small back ends like the Fiskers or uh, other fiberglass ones. First, we're gonna cut these stems down. Remember I was teaching you guys about drop starting your saws, put your chain brake on, put this bar up over something where the tip's not gonna hit and start it.
sure this fur isn't going to reach that gate over there. I don't believe so. We'll check. Okay, when you guys are cutting trees, if you're unsure if a tree is going to fit into a space you're wanting it to go to, go walk all the way out and look at it. Okay, I can see from here, looking up at a 45 degree angle to the top, that's what it'll be, 45 degrees. I know the top's going to be right in here, so I don't have a lot of risk of it coming over here into the gate. Now I can go back over and start putting my face in. Okay guys, remember this fur here is leaned out right on in between these two fruit trees right here. And we wanna bring it over here more towards the gate or towards the stump. The way to do that is to put in a scissor wheel, keep a lot of holding wood on the right side of the tree so that it'll grab it and swing it over away from its, its lean, okay? I'll show you that now. What I do is I cut up the bark on this on the sides where my hinge is gonna be so I can precisely tell how much hinge I have so I don't cut it off. We're gonna go with the conventional because I really wanna make sure the face is clean and it's all dialed in.
split here the hinge is starting to move already there's two cracks starting this hinge is going to fold right into this void and hold this tree on as it swings out over here okay keep your saw running and keep the the bar in the cut we're going to double up our wedges now Take a look at the top. It's starting to move. wood I cut this off because so I didn't need holding one on this side the lean was out there I want holding one on this side you can see here where this was cut off we had a tapered hinge over here well all this wood over here where the sizz wheel was moved into the void see this had this void not been here there would have been enough stress probably on this hinge wood to pull it out or break it prior to the tree being able to rotate over here. The tree wanted to go here. We swung it out maybe 40 degrees to the side of the lean. That was only because the scissor wheel was put in. Hey guys, the scissor wheel technique takes quite a bit of time to learn and get used to. I wouldn't suggest using that right off the bat near any sort of houses. Um, structures, things like that. I would just practice that away from things that can potentially be damaged until you get the hang of it. I'm going to make some more videos of how to use the scissor wheel in various applications um, and that'll help you guys be a little more comfortable with it. Uh, so stay tuned for those videos that are coming up. And that's it for the video guys. God bless and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I 
am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold, and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. 